Camden Yards is your home all the time, and it's a great park. I don't know why I was thinking you guys were on the road tonight, but you're not. But this is a team, Melanie, that you had so much faith in coming into the season. I don't know that anybody thought they would have had 41 wins already except for the organization itself. How were they doing it, my friend? It's really impressive, Alana. In the last four days and the four straight that they've won, this is what it has taken. It's a complete game effort. Having defense that does not miss a beat. Guys like Santander, who are fully healthy, even without Ryan Mountcastle, Ryan O'Hearn has stepped up tremendously and shown just what an asset he can be and why he was one of the first guys they went after in the free agent market this offseason. But um, the pitching comes in and the starters are finally stepping up, going no less than five, saving that bullpen. You're finally seeing the offense pick up enough to where most of the games have been within four runs. They finally had a few that were not. That means you can stay away from Yanir Cano, Felix Bautista, guys that have had some excessive usage this year. Get your low leverage guys in there. Give everybody a little rest. It's finally seeing that really good mix because that's what it's going to take to move forward. And of course, it helps that that preseason rookie of the year pick, Gunnar Henderson, is absolutely <laughs> locked in right now. Yeah, you mentioned Gunnar Henderson, and I was bragging about Henderson to our friends up in Canada on, on Blue Jays Central, talking about don't let this kid beat you. Everybody thinks, you know, other guys in that lineup, Adley Rutschman, Anthony Santander, but there's something special about Gunnar Henderson, and he was just named the AL Player, AL player of the Week. What makes him so special? He's just got such a good head on his shoulders. And I love that Kyle Gibson was even talking about this yesterday. It's a young group that just has a different mental and emotional makeup to the way they approach the game. Now, he's hard on himself. Don't let us get you wrong. The yes ma'ams and no sirs that he will use every single time. He is still a hard-nosed competitive athlete, but really found a good way. You and I have talked about this before. Using the Legos to kind of break down his game, keep things separate. His defense never faltered while he was trying to find himself at the plate. And because of that, he was still reaching. He was just getting walks. But the swing has finally come around. I actually joked with him. Everybody knows he's got the beautiful blonde flow. He got a haircut in Milwaukee on the team off day, and he was horrified. They cut it way too short. He said he felt the razor go past his ear, and he went, whoa, let's slow down. This is not what I was looking for. But now the joke is I think the haircut has hits in it. You might have to actually keep it this length because he's had eight hits going against Kansas city, a 1600 plus OPS, the longest regular season Utah street home run in Orioles history. And it's not even close. 462 feet is not a fluke. That's knowing your swing that's coming in and really feeling confident in yourself again. And it has shown tremendously in and out of the clubhouse. This kid is going to have a stellar rest of the season. And Melanie, he is a kid. He's young, but you mentioned the 462-foot home run, and he was very jovial after that. He said, maybe when I you know, have that man strength, I can hit it even a little bit further. So he understands that he's young in the game, but he's playing like a big boy. How much does his personality help? The personality is huge. And again, that goes for all of these guys. And it's it's that little group of Adley Rutschman, Taryn Vavra, Gunner, even Ryan Mountcastle. They're young but they're all so interconnected to each other. And I think they have such a uh, reservation and an understanding and appreciation of the older guys and the Orioles that have come before them and those big teams. Austin Hayes has told them, you know, I walked into this clubhouse as a rookie in 2017 and I was so starstruck by the number of all-stars that were in that clubhouse. And obviously the landscape has changed significantly since Hayes was first here. But I think understanding and being willing to listen and learn about that just gives them that place of, I can be young, I can be a kid right now, and I can appreciate that. I'm also going to come in with the best of my abilities. And I'm also going to know that there's only room to go up from here. And Austin Hayes, you mentioned him, and you also mentioned he was in awe of all of the All-Stars in the room. Melanie, he could be in the All-Star game this year. His 301 average is fifth best in the American League. How have you seen him develop? He's just been healthy. I mean, this is a very wrist-heavy swinger. We actually talked last year. I asked him if he knew 
Hank Aaron was a very obviously well-known wrist heavy swinger. And I said, you know, Hank used to sit down on Sundays with the paper and he would just keep tearing sections in half. And that's how he strengthened his wrist. I'm not going to say that's what he's doing. He's never uh, commented that he has, but the health has been there this year. He is hard nosed. He has played through all of the dings. He nearly blew open his finger earlier this year, getting hit on a bunt attempt and only missed a couple of days. He has not hit the IL since 2021. And I think it's that alone. He's getting the reps. He's out there on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's really showing you the ceiling he can get. I, I mean, we've watched how many guys now for Baltimore go from not being everyday players, kind of fighting their way in and out of the bench, and all of a sudden they come out and they flourish. You you look at Jorge Mateo. I just mentioned Ryan O'Hearn. Aaron Hicks, now that he's back to being an everyday guy. I mean, the numbers that they are producing because the faith and consistency that this club puts in them is astounding. You mentioned Aaron Hicks, and we were so good to tear this guy down when he was struggling mightily with the New York Yankees. Let's lift this guy up because since he became a Baltimore Oriole and has played every single day, Melanie, he has reached base safely in all 10 games that he has played. He's hitting 345. What has that quote unquote proverbial change of scenery done for him? He looks like a completely different person, Alana. And this was someone I never got to know personally while he was in New York, but you could see it on the screen. You could see it in his face. It, it was just tired. You know, people it sounded like weren't on the same page as he was, but he comes in here and he kind of laughed. He said, listen, I'm not used to being like the old man in the clubhouse. I'm not used to having these guys who are 10 years younger than me, but, but here we are, you know, he gets to have a beard. He feels like he has his personality <laughs> back a little bit. This shouldn't really shock people. I know everybody's saying like he came to Baltimore and the lights turned on, but the final days before he was released from New York, he had gone six for 17. He had a three for four game. I mean, this was somebody who still had it in there, but again, wasn't out there every day. And, and I guess really didn't feel either. Like there was a lot of faith behind him and that's hard to press through on that. Now you mentioned it. He's got a 10 game on base streak. That's his longest. If you have to go back to 2020 when he reached in 12 straight, he's collected extra base hits. He's already had a home run, but he just looks so much lighter and that he's actually enjoying it. And I think too, it also helps. We know Baltimore media is different than New York media. This is a really great place to land. If you're somebody in Hicks's situation, not just in the game, but in life, because you almost get to rediscover yourself. And of course, we're going to let you have a little fun with it. I joked with them. I said, listen, you got to make sure you get all the celebrations down because there's a lot of them and the boys are going to be watching. And of course, he's already had a couple doubles and triples, so he's figured it out easily. Yeah, I love to see it. Good for Aaron Hicks. Uh, he needed that for sure. Melanie, thanks so much. We appreciate your time as always.